What's the nicest thing anybody ever said to you? You're a good dad. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't know how to be a dad. Uh, I, I didn't have one around most of my childhood. So I learned as they went. Unfortunately, my 12-year-old suffered through the first five years of his life while I was trying to figure out how to do this. I was better at being a nose guard or a defensive tackle than I was being a dad. And I'm proud to say that it's a work in progress, but I'm, I'm getting better at it every day. I'm more proud of what I do at home than I am anywhere else. Just think how cool it must be to have Howie Long for a father. He's a football legend and a movie star. And he's a great example of how hard work can pay off. He grew up a poor, tough kid in Boston. He struggled in school and had to work his way through college. Now, when you went to, to Villanova, did that, was that the first time that you ever thought that you might have the ability to, to make a career out of playing pro football? I never gave pro football a second thought. I uh, never imagined that I would be good enough to play in pro ball. Long didn't even play in his final three games at Villanova because he was expelled from school. I was in an off-campus altercation in Philadelphia. Now what's an altercation? Mean? It's a fight. Okay. <laughs> it's a better way of saying it. A fight. But he made a name for himself by showcasing his talents to anyone who would watch. I worked out for every scout there was. I worked out 65 times. What was the most unusual workout that you had? Probably when the guy from the Colts came by and ran me on the front lawn of my dorm on a Sunday morning at like 9 a.m., knocked on my door, woke me up. I didn't have any cleats. He didn't care. He had a girl in the car. I, I remember the one, the one guy. You always had to find a way as a scout to cover your rear end. Runs great, great vertical jump. Uh, doesn't use his hands well, lacks toughness. This was the one guy. And I said, geez, you know, if he could have said That's anything. That's what they said about you? If he could have said anything. You know, I never lacked toughness. Howie Long was tough. I mean, Howie Long had, you know, came from some place where they made tough guys because he was a tough guy right off the bat, right out of the chute. And right out of the chute, he had to prove his toughness. Do you remember your first pit drill with the Raiders? Art Shell. I remember Art Shell stepped up there, and here's Art Shell. I'm now 20 years old, and I'm not shaving. And you know, Art Shell's 36, 37 years old. He's got a beard. He's 330 pounds, and he's all man. Dave Browning steps up to go against Art Shell, and and Earl Leggett walks in and grabs Dave Browning. Well, apparently Earl Leggett and Art Shell have worked this out. We always have what we call an Oklahoma drill, and it's a one-on-one -on -one block. So you want to try your rookies out. The first time he came off the ball. He hit me here and cracked, cracked a little crack of my cheekbone here and slit me here with his helmet. And when Art came off the ball, he would also throw a double fist to your abdomen. So not only was I knocked out, I couldn't breathe. And I thought Art Shell had almost killed him. <laughs> Scared me there for a while. Did you ever doubt that yourself, that you, that, that you oh, were in the wrong? I called home. I called home to my grandmother and I said, tell Uncle Mikey I, I, I might need a job. His greatest asset was his insecurity. Howie Long never thought he was that good. He always was trying to prove that he was. Every year, it's one of the things he would do. He would always ask me, uh, you know, am I going to get cut? <laughs> you know, you think about it like this. I played 13 years in the NFL. I went to eight Pro Bowls. I was on one of the two defensive ends on the all-decade team, and I never enjoyed my career. I had five sacks versus the Redskins in their heyday in one game, and on the ride back to California on the plane, all I could think about was the four run plays that I blew. It was not until I retired when I had sat down and said, you were pretty good. Ironically, the coach who tested Howie's toughness with the pit drill was the same man who shaped his career. Earl Leggett took me to another level of physical commitment that I had never been to. He challenged me physically, mentally. Uh, he made me a football player. And he made him perhaps the most versatile defensive lineman ever. He could play all over. Some guys get so special, you know, I have to be on this side and I have to be open side. Howie used to go and, and play like a piano. He'd play up and down the line of scrimmage. Let me have this guy. He'd play over the tackle, over the guard, over the center, over the other guard, over the other tackle. They'd put him any place when he'd flip a guy.
how he did it so effortlessly and it happened so quick it was like a boxer. It was a combination. It was jab, boom, bang. Plus, maybe one of the smartest guys I've ever been around on the field. Now, I've been blessed to play with really smart players. Ronnie Lott, he got it. Charles Haley, as good as there was. Joe Montana, what can I say? Howie Long is right there. And he was the best, like, built big guy that I've ever seen. I mean, usually, usually when a guy gets, you know, he weighs 280 pounds or something like that, he looks like a guy that weighs 280 pounds, you know what I mean? But he looked like a guy that weighed 185 pounds. So he was tough, smart, and good looking. It was only natural that he thought about a second career. I said, look, go take some acting lessons. Because, you know, there's some times that we would go shopping, you know, just bumming around, you know, together. And we would go in a store and they would have women in behind the counters and they couldn't talk. <laughs> you could see little red streaks coming up their face, you know, you know, he's a handsome guy. Heck, when we moved to Los Angeles, we started calling him Howiewood. You knew it was a matter of time before he got down there. But before Howie became a box office draw on the big screen... That's exactly how I thought it would be. <laughs> he honed his skills on the small screen doing corny commercials, and appearing in low-budget TV shows. And here's your host, Howie Long. We measure many modern athletes in dollar signs. We measure Chuck Bednarik in minutes. Sixty of them. What about the first time you walked on a movie set? Was that in any way similar to the first time that you showed up at a, at a, at a Raiders practice? Did you feel intimidated? Uh, what am I doing here? Am I out of place? I had never been on a movie set, had never taken an acting lesson. And I said to my wife, I said, this is the biggest scam I've pulled off yet. I mean, it's just remarkable that I'm here. I'm sitting in a career and with John Travolta in a car. Why do you want to be an actor now? Why? It's another challenge. It's something to either succeed at or fail. I, you, you need that fix. I need that fix. I wanted to be in the movie since I was a kid, though. I always wanted to be Charlton Heston. I wanted to be El Cid. I wanted to be Spartacus. Remember when that scene in Spartacus where uh, they came out and they wanted to know who Spartacus was and they all stood up and said, I'm Spartacus. I was in my bedroom <laughs> doing that. Is there any role that, you, that, that right now that you would really want to play? I'd love to do a remake of The Quiet Man with John oh, Wayne. Quiet Man would be a fitting role for Howie. His actions have always spoken louder than his words. Maybe that's because he's been given so few words to say, especially in his movie, Firestorm. Do you have a problem, uh, you know, with your lines? Do you have to study the night before? It's an before? action movie. Yeah. So you don't, what do you have, like, about a page or two? <laughs> <laughs> Howie Long isn't sure what his acting future will be, but he's quite thankful for his football past. Football, to me, was the establishing of my life. It gave me an opportunity to better everything. Uh, gave me an opportunity to find my own identity. I don't think anything that I will ever experience in life is anywhere near as challenging, demanding, or intimidating as professional football. Uh, I don't think any form of work that I take on in the future will be as difficult. I know what hard work is. You know, I, I started work when I was 11 years old. I, I bagged groceries, unloaded trucks. I did everything that swept floors during happy hour in a bar in the North End, and then went on to professional football. And professional football, if you make a career of it and you want to be one of the better people, uh, the sacrifice is incredible. He made the sacrifice. Now, he's reaping the rewards. I didn't ask to be in the movies. I didn't ask to be in the NFL. I didn't ask to go into broadcasting. Um, things just seemed to pop up for me. My life has been just a ride, and, and I don't necessarily know where it's going, but I'm, I'm enjoying the ride.